All right, let's talk Mets and Yankees here. With the moves that the Mets have made this offseason, again, they've done a lot to steal the limelight from pretty much everybody. Okay, they brought back Edwin Diaz. They replaced three starters with three new starters. And the you know, with other moves as well, they brought back Daniel Vogel back and, and brought in David Robertson. And, then, and last night's blockbuster, they signed Carlos Correa out of nowhere after he failed his physical with the Giants. Uh, well, I should say they agreed to sign him. Now, now the same thing could happen here. The physical, he could fail. And he could void the contract. But I don't see that happen. I, see, I, I, I think he's going to find a way to pass this exam. So... Um, but this is a prime example of Steve Cohen, you know, doing exactly what he said. He wants to win. He'll do whatever it takes to do it. And again, coming out of nowhere and capitalizing on an opening, an opportunity that presented itself late last night, negotiating for a couple hours, and then coming up with a deal with Scott Boris, super agent, again. And it's also a kind of a slap in the face to the Giants as well. I mean, they lost out on Rodon. They lost out on Judge. They lost out on uh, Correa now. So they're the ones hurting here. And they've got money to spend. So <clears throat> they brought in a couple of players, but they have work to do. And I, I can still see them making a bunch of moves. You know, they're not going to be any of the big premier guys, but it is what it is. So, but the Mets right now, as we stand, we've got the Yankees bringing back Judge, naming him captain, um, bringing in Carlos Rodon, also adding Tommy Canley and, and Junior Fernandez to the bullpen, bringing back Rizzo. The Mets are better than the Yankees right now. But two words on paper and we know what that means on paper means absolutely nothing unless you perform in the postseason the Mets were better on paper than the Yankees were last year who who made it to the playoffs uh, further into deeper in the playoffs Yankees did okay so again this is a little bit of a different Mets team the reason why I say this because they're replacing two-time Cy Young award winner just uh, Jacob DeGrom without any playoff tested experience with three-time Cy Young award winner Justin Verlin who's playoff tested and playoff successful so difference maker upgrade they also replacing Eduardo Escobar, solid play with Carlos Correa. Upgrade. Obviously, he's got to stay healthy. Back issues popped up on his physical exam, so that's to, to our knowledge is why he failed it. So, so he's got to stay healthy too. But he's also a difference maker, and he's brought in two former Astros teammates on the same team, both playoff and World Series champions. So, um, he's upgraded the Mets team. The Mets are better. They are better. But are they better than the Astros? I don't know about that. But I think right now, this as we speak, they're probably better than the Padres. The teams that you know, the team that beat them in the wild card around last year. So I'm guessing right now, and they're better than the Yankees. But on paper, like I said, means nothing. Are the Yankees closer to the Astros? Yeah, but have they completely closed the gap? No, because now it's a point of what are they going to do for left field? What moves are they going to make now to make the team better and or counter Carlos Correa move? If they, if there's you know they're looking to get the Thunder back or whatever the limelight back in New York, because in, in based the fact is baseball is better when both New York teams are at their very best and, and <clears throat> trying to win a championship. And right now, the Mets are in the driver's seat with that. So it really de- it depends on what the Yankees do now moving forward. Now, Aaron Judge's press conference was today. They named him captain officially, and that was it was great and all. And it was a couple of things that stood out to me. One, Aaron Judge kind of teased that the Yankees were not done making moves, and a couple more moves would be good. And then Hal Steinbrenner confirmed that. He said, we're not done yet, So, which is encouraging to hear. And, and Hal Steinbrenner was the guy that was willing to spend on Aaron Judge, so that encourages me too, but... What moves? Okay, it has to be the right one now. I mean, all due respect to Michael Conforto and for agency, he could turn out to be great, but does he move the needle enough to, to counter Carlos Correa? I don't think so. All due respect to him, I hope he stays healthy and, has any, and, and is able to be productive and successful again, but there's no guarantee there, okay? I mean, Dalton Varsho and Brian Reynolds seem to be the most obvious guys to kind of move the needle for the Yankees. The Yankees need a difference maker, and those two guys represent difference makers. I mean... Jerks and Profar doesn't do it for me. Ben Gamble doesn't do it for me. I mean, Andrew Chafin will be nice in the bullpen. I'm hearing that the Yankees are still looking to make a move. Liam Hendricks to me doesn't make any sense at all. They need a lefty difference maker, and 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 you know, a guy like Andrew Chafin would be, or a guy like Gregory Soto would make a difference here. I think so. And the other good news is, I mean, DJ LeMahieu does not need surgery. So it makes it easier for them should they want to trade Glaber Torres to do that now because they have his replacement at second base. And, you know, I think the, the the obsession with third base and shortstop is, they, I don't think they're moving on from Donaldson. You know, I mean, unless they can move his contract and move IKF to third, okay. But as we stand right now, Donaldson, you know, and Donaldson is the third baseman. And IKF could be the utility guy. If, I, if I'm them, I'm making him the utility guy, okay? And uh, Oswaldo Cabrera, the super utility guy, <clears throat> right now playing Oswald Peraza at shortstop because it's a defensive upgrade that we need over IKF at short. So... Let's just be straight up about that. 
But at the same token, where can they upgrade easiest? Left field or third base? Well, third base, who is out there that's available that's an upgrade? Nobody. Could have been Correa, but he feels physical. So I understand the red flags there. And we'll see what happens with Correa. But he's off, the, he's off the books now. So left field is the easiest place to upgrade where they can make a difference. And again, two guys. I mean, I like Jake McCarthy and some of these other guys. But Dalton Varsho is offensively ahead of these guys. So is Brian Reynolds. Those are the two guys I think they should be laser focused on right now, in my opinion. So um, I'm going to talk about this tonight. I'm going to go live tonight. We got this is this is definitely an interesting. This is, and it shocked the baseball world this morning. So we'll go live tonight. We'll talk about this. And I hope that you're subscribed to the channel if you enjoy this content. If you want to hop on the live stream, so please do that before you leave as well. I don't want you missing stuff. We always go live on Saturdays, but when something like this impactful happens, got to do it. Got to do it. So it's going to be a fun one. But let me know what you think of this and how at this point can the Yankees best counter. This Mets move, and, I, and there's no, there's been no like mention of that. That's what the Yankees need to do because they, they're only going to play these guys in interleague play twice per year for six games, and then potentially in the World Series if they get that far. So the Yankees need players, and, and to me, <clears throat> Reynolds and Varsho, even though they're in the National League right now, coming over here would be the only two guys that can actually move the needle for the Yankees left field. Now if they got a guy like McCarthy or whatever, or this other kid, I forgot his name, Alec Thomas, okay, but. Offensively, I mean, we got better in the pitching staff, but we're still not better offensively. They bring back Judge and bring back Rizzo, doesn't move the needle anymore. They're just paying them more. Matt Carpenter is gone, signed to Padres. So there's other offensive pieces that we're missing. And Glaber Torres, we'd have to replace his offense too. So a guy like those two, again, I'll stress them again Reynolds and Varsho would be the two guys most representative of moving the needle for the Yankees right now. With controllable years and wouldn't cost it would cost prospects yes but at this point <clears throat> there's nobody available in free agency that gives them a chance to do that so they have to make a trade and they have to make a smart one they have to make a good one it's going to cost some pieces it's going to hurt temporarily but who else are they going to be i mean I, I don't i think they can get either one of these guys without giving up anthony volpe i do there's plenty in this yankees farm and again it's going to hurt no doubt about it but if they want to get better that's the price that has to be paid you know, as I, I like Michael Conforto, but I, I worry about him coming off a major shoulder injury, whether he's going to get hurt again, and, and does he really move the needle? I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let's sort up the comments. Let's talk about this one.